Hello, everybody, and welcome to Money Matters. If you like to make money and learning about crypto as well as investing, please subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy the content, then hit that like button as well. Let's get going. Remember, this channel is focused on you and your financial freedom. And as a disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial nor investment advice. If you need such invi advice, please find yourself a very good accredited financial advisor. Taking a look at the market, and you'll see here that I had to redo this chart several times today. I started this morning and uh, it's just been changing very quickly. Uh, Ethereum is holding its own. However, the rest of the market, as you can see, is seeing red, as I've been seeing red too. Well, we don't like these days, but uh, you have to have the bad days to enjoy the good days. So I suppose that's par for the course. Uh, regardless, it's, it's a retracement. Uh, we're reconsolidating. We're going back down. We're looking for a lot of things to happen in the market. This is nothing unusual. It's trying, of course, but um, the good things will come. So uh, just stay steady. Don't panic. Um, there's nothing to panic about. Uh, it's all part of how this market works. It's one of the most volatile markets in the world. And if you, uh, if you like it, then just embrace it. Uh, but again, Ethereum uh, still uh, moving. In fact, it was over 2,600 earlier today. Um, I don't know where it is right now. It's like 2,300 when, I'm, when I switched this chart out. Um, but it's still doing well. And, and this video is focused on Ethereum. So I'm happy about that. Uh, in the news, all about Ethereum again. Uh, Canada does it again. Actually, they, they did it before at the same time. It was on Tuesday that they launched three new ETFs that were focused on Ethereum, um, along with their three Bitcoin uh, ETFs as well. Uh, over a billion dollars in assets have flowed into these three new Ethereum ETFs in just the past, what, three days. That's, that's stellar. That's amazing. What that tells me is that there's a huge appetite for people, regular people who want traditional venues or traffic on ramps to invest in cryptocurrency. So the more ETFs that come along, the more money is going to be pouring into the market. A lot more money than we've seen in the past. And um, it's just going to be coming faster and faster and faster as soon as the floodgates open. And I think after the United States uh, launches their first ETFs, um, we'll see a lot of countries follow suit. Um, and just as a note, if you do have access as an American citizen to the Toronto stock exchange, you are eligible to trade in these in these funds. But I think that there's all kinds of legal constraints and residential constraints that go along with that. So um, that being said, if you're a US citizen, you're still out of luck. The money keeps pouring into Ethereum. This is very interesting. A report published by CoinShares noted that this quarter alone, first quarter in this year, 4.2 billion dollars worth of capital flowed into Ethereum. Grayscale, which we'll talk about a little bit more here, uh, which is an investment firm based in New York, uh, they increased their actual Ethereum token or coin holdings from 2.94 million at the start of the year to just over 3.17 million uh, as of April 12th. If you think this is a lot, you ain't seen nothing yet. And I'm telling you this because they've expanded their repertoire of coins that they're holding for funds and future ETFs and uh, just keep buying it up more and more. In fact, I, th I know that they're the largest um, investment company basically or investment uh, uh, firm that uh, or holds the most Bitcoin of all. Um, I don't know what their ranking is for Ethereum, but I would guess that it's pretty high as well. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the Grayscale Unlock, if you're an accredited investor, not accredited in the sense that you have $25,000 to put in, but you're accredited in the sense that you don't have to buy your um, ETH fund through your brokerage account. You can go directly to Grayscale and buy it. That means you have lots of money. Um, when you buy off the market through the fund, you have to abide by certain rules that are specific to that purchase. One of those rules is a constituted lockup period of six months, meaning that when you buy with that block of, of ether, let's just say it's a million coins or a million shares, um, you have to hold that for six months before you're allowed to sell it. And the reason that this has been appealing to investors is because 
in the early days, not right now at this moment, but in the early days of the fund since like 2017, the shares have been trading at a premium. So there was an arbitrage opportunity for investors to come in, buy this product, sell it, and then re-enter when the price is down. Well, the tack today is that when people are holding ETH fund through Grayscale, the lockup period ends, they take that money out, they cash it out because they typically make a huge profit. Instead of reinvesting it back into the fund, they go directly to exchanges and they turn it in for coins. So they, they take their, their shares that they're holding in this fund and they buy actual crypto. Then they take it offline and put it in cold storage for future gains. So what does that mean for us? Well, it's all about supply and demand. Demand from whales, and we can, we can consider uh, a lot of these people who use the Grayscale Fund as whales. They're very uh, wealthy individuals that hold a large amount of crypto and other assets as well. In fact, it's estimated that 68% of all the ether supply that's in circulation is being held by these rich individuals. I think that there's a, a very cloudy line between individuals and institution now, but uh, you can kind of group them all together because the numbers are small, the amount is great. Despite the price volatility of Ethereum coins inside exchanges, continue to see a decreased supply. So if you look at the chart here, uh, this is the Ethereum supply on exchanges. This is for all exchanges. The pink line represents the amount of Ethereum that's actually available to trade on those exchanges. So you can see from left to right, I think it's still left to right on your screen, um, it, it's going down and it's going down in drastic steps. When you see a big square drop, that means that somebody's pulling off or several people or individuals or institutions are pulling money or not money, I'm sorry, Ethereum off of exchange and putting it into cold storage. It's no longer available for them to sell or for other people to buy it, um, which is amazing in the sense that there's so much interest in it right now, but it kind of plays into what we've been talking about. So as this happens, the supply that's available goes down. And of course, from our Economics 101, we remember as supply goes down, demand goes up, the price soon does follow. So how will the price track? Well, here's a recent chart for Ethereum and I, uh, kind of crudely drew a, a light blue squiggly line going up and to the right. This is what's going to happen. Ethereum should continue its move to the up and right. It's going to be a consolidation upward. It's not gonna be sideways, it's going to be going up. Sometimes a bit faster than other times, but it's going to go up. Not to say that it won't correct or retrace, but overall it will continue the pattern that you see on the screen now uh, and raise up to the prices that I was kind of looking at earlier. You won't see any big jumps unless there's some sort of a spectacular event. It could be news FUD or it could be something else uh, like Ethereum doesn't have gas fees anymore or something like that. But uh, all that aside, we should see what's happening on this chart continue to happen uh, for the foreseeable future. And I'm, I'm saying all the way through the second quarter and even into July for their next release. Uh, what is the target price? That's what we're all here for, right? Well, supply is becoming an issue. We've talked about that. We know institutional investors are looking to get in at any turn they can. Money's coming out of Grayscale and it will be moving into the actual crypto market. Remember, Grayscale's already purchased all their Ethereum that backs the shares that people buy. There's no transactions going on there that would drive up the price of current or of Bitcoin, I'm sorry, Ether in the uh, Ether market. However, if somebody sells their Ferrari and takes that money and goes into Coinbase and buys Ethereum, that does affect the price. So if you see millions, hundreds of millions, or even billions of dollars coming out of a fund going into an exchange, that will affect the price of Ethereum. So my guess, my best guess, educated guess, would be that right around 32 to 4,800 by the end, beginning of May is the target that I'm looking at. Whether we get there sooner or later is really a question of many things. However, this is what I see. Again, I'll also state that in my mind, when we have our July release, there should be a fairly heavy impact to price then as well. 
my guess would be something <clears throat> along the lines of 20 to 30 percent increase somewhere in July and then onwards and upwards as we move later into the year. So let's do a quick recap. We got a lot to unpack here. Ethereum has started to decouple from Bitcoin and remains the top performer between the two. Again, somewhere between 500% versus around 300%. Um, it, it outperforms and, and provides a great return. If you're an investor, if you're an institutional investor in charge of billions of dollars, do you want to follow an investment that makes you 300% or 500%? 500 is typically what people would say. So you will see more and more money coming into Ethereum. It's a solid project, everybody knows it, and it is going to be capitalized on just like Bitcoin is um, in a different way, but the money coming in is gonna be no different, it's gonna be hefty. Uh, Canadian ETFs are in full swing, and our hope is that someday, over the rainbow, uh, we get ETFs here in the United States so that average investors who have retirement accounts and whatnot can use those uh, ETFs to get uh, crypto exposure in their portfolios. Demand of Ethereum, especially on large uh, investor institutional front, is increasing at an ever quickening pace. And that is not going to change. It's not going to slow down just like it has not for Bitcoin. And don't let the price fool you. The, the price of Bitcoin is consolidating for a multitude of reasons. But this, the underlying stability of the price has not. It, we will never see another $30,000 Bitcoin. At least that's my prediction. It's not financial advice. That's just what I see. Um, the ETH supply is starting to dwindle on exchanges. Um, not slowly, but quickly. And remember, as the supply dries up, the price will go up as well. So look for this price to keep going up. My second quarter ETH price predictions are somewhere between 3,200 and 4,800. And as I stated earlier, the July release, update release for Ethereum for the blockchain will have enhancements with it that should propel it into at least a 20 to 30 percentage uh, increase around July, August. My guess would be somewhere in late fall, early, or maybe even late winter, December, that we could easily see an Ethereum price of somewhere between eight and $10,000. Don't quote me on that because I'm not a financial advisor. However, that's what I see. All right, everybody, remember, scammers are out there. They want just about everything from you. So keep everything close to the vest. Do not divulge any personal information or fall for any of those uh, scammy, um, actually very sophisticated uh, scam techniques. Uh, always be vigilant and on the lookout. And last but not least, Remember, winners never quit and quitters never win. Always give your very best effort to overcome the challenges that you face in life. I hope you had a great day. I certainly did. And I will see you tomorrow.